Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael's Church. I am Headmaster Andrew Lang, and I am very pleased to welcome you to our Encounter the Holy Spirit retreat. I had the pleasure of going over housekeeping with you all uh, at the beginning of the day, uh, and we will do that in a moment, but I just wanted to... uh, Uh, give you the inspiration for the retreat, this wonderful book by Father Jacques Philippe, Searching for and Maintaining Peace. So if you haven't read it, uh, this is a great day to learn about it. All the talks will be surrounding themes in this book. And uh, it's small and mighty. That's the way I describe it. uh, uh, I've never finished this. I've started it multiple times and never finished it because I always reach a point where I feel like I don't need to go any further. Uh, So it is one of those powerful books that if you don't have it, I strongly encourage you to get it, and we do have copies available in back. Uh, The schedule of the day, hopefully uh, you have a copy of uh, the program for the day here, and I will just briefly mention what is happening here. Uh, We currently have confessions going on, and... uh, Father Park has generously uh, joined the ranks of priests here in confession, so presently we are going to continue confessions. And uh, at 9 o'clock, we'll have the vote of Mass to the Holy Spirit. Now, if you were one of those pious souls who got here early for confession and happened to attend Mass earlier because St. Michael's had their regular Saturday Mass, uh, you can go to Mass again, actually. Uh, but most of you are probably here for Mass for the first time, and uh, it is a special Mass with prayers dedicated to the work of the Holy Spirit. After Mass, we'll have adoration and benediction for 15 minutes. We also are going to have prayer ministry in the back, and you'll see signs over there. I'll explain what that is just briefly. Uh, This is a a ministry of St. Michael's that we are glad to, to coordinate with, Uh, If you need someone to pray with, if you have an intention on your heart that you just need to uh, connect with someone on, the prayer team is wonderful for that. Uh, Of course, when two or three are gathered in our Lord's name, he is there with us, so we know he's with us today, but he'll also be with you if you need to talk to someone on the prayer ministry team. We'll have a break at 10.30, uh, and then we'll gather Uh, at 11 o'clock after some remarks from me as well as introducing you to some students. Uh, And at 11 o'clock we'll have our two virtual talks with uh, Father Michael Schmitz and Bishop Cousins, both on topics related to searching for and maintaining peace. So all of those will be broadcast here in the church, Uh, so uh, get comfortable. Uh, where you are is great, and uh, the, the rest of the program will just commence uh, after Mass in here. If you've traveled a ways to come here, congratulations, you made it. Uh, we always are very happy to welcome uh, guests, uh, people who are not familiar with Holy Spirit Academy, and last year we had people who had never been to St. Michael's before, Uh, Holy Spirit Academy is located up 94 in Monticello, actually at St. Henry's Church. We are a co-ed high school, uh, very uh, proud of our our Catholic faith and our Catholic identity, and we are a young school. Uh, We are in our seventh year of operation, and we are different in our Christ-centered curriculum that prepares students for a life of service to others. And we draw students up and down 94 to Holy Spirit Academy, and and, uh, many of our best and brightest students come right here from St. Michael. So we are very glad to host this event today, which is uh, a lovely venue uh, for a retreat. And you will, if if you're interested, you'll have a chance to grab uh, whatever material interests you on Holy Spirit Academy in the back. And you might say, well, I'm retired, so I'm probably not going to high school. Yeah, well, good for you. I'm glad you're retired, and and you probably have time to share some good news about the school. So please do grab a newsletter 
uh, or grab a brochure and pass it on to someone that you think would benefit from a Catholic education. And we are certainly always glad to answer any questions you have as well. Uh, our school colors are maroon and gold, and so if you see any of the uh, students here wearing their sweaters, uh, they are in uniform and they are here to serve, so please do feel free to ask them any questions you may have. And uh, a number of families at the tables here uh, are volunteers from Holy Spirit Academy, parents and friends of the school who are helping out with the retreat. So please ask away any questions that you have when you happen to be on break from the retreat. If it is your very first time here, I do want to just let you know that the bathrooms are, if you walk out of the church, it, they are to my right over by the coat racks. Uh, so if you need to use the bathroom, of course, at any time, you are free to do that. And they are just to my right in the back over there. Okay, well, good. Well, I, I certainly uh, am very grateful to St. Michael's to be able to host this lovely and hopefully peaceful uh, retreat where we will ask the Holy Spirit to give us peace and to inspire our lives with uh, the peace that uniquely comes from God. So uh, do uh, uh, please find me if you have any questions and thank you very much for attending today. I'm just going to encourage any uh, late uh, arrivals for the Encounter of the Holy Spirit retreat to please find their seats here in the church. Mass is about to begin momentarily. We have the pleasure of having Monsignor Callahan preside at Mass, and uh, Father Meyer will also be assisting at Mass. Father Callahan uh, was ordained at St. Peter's Basilica in 1971. After earning a doctorate in canon law, he worked with Mother Teresa and the Missionaries of Charity. From 2005 to 2018, he formed many joyful Catholic priests as the rector and vice president of St. Paul Seminary. He was responsible for greatly improving enrollment and expanding the programs there. And he continues to work uh, at the Seminary for the Advancement of Community Relations and also serves at St. Tim's in Maple Lake and St. Ignatius in Annandale. It's with sincere appreciation that I, on behalf of Holy Spirit Academy, welcome Monsignor Callahan to preside with us today. 
as well as Father Meyer. So thank you very much uh, for finding a seat at Mass. We'll begin momentarily. And uh, I'll just introduce you to one last thing. Uh, this is the bell. Uh, at school, I have the pleasure of ringing it whenever pe uh, periods change uh, throughout the day. And so uh, throughout the day, if you hear the bell ring, that means we're about to transition. So make sure you're not late. You might get a detention.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. What a pleasure it is to celebrate the Mass in this beautiful church. We're praying and celebrating the vote of the Mass of the Holy Spirit, and we're praying for peace. Peace for for our church, peace for our country, and peace for our families. And in our prayer today, we pray in a special way that the Lord would come to us, give us his consolation, give us his mercy and his peace. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we remember that we are sinners and we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord. Let us pray. O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place Water. together. And suddenly Water. there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tons as of fire, 
which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all of these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our reading from the first book of Corinthians. And to no one can say, Jesus is Lord, 
except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, be Thanks God. to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus, said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive, are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, in this celebration, as we prepared for Mass, we were asked to answer the question, how to find peace in our current culture. St. Padre Pio, said, peace is the simplicity of the spirit, the serenity of conscience, the tranquility of the soul, and the bond of love. My brothers and sisters, perhaps the secret for peace is simply abandoning our minds and our hearts to God. Our Blessed Mother Mary, she gave us a beautiful example. She just said yes. Totally yours. 
Earlier this month, we celebrated the presentation of the Lord in the temple, the fourth joyful mystery. The spotlight in that mystery was two old people, Simeon and Anna. Simeon and Anna gave us a lesson of what can happen when we speak to God with love. Simeon and Anna were two great people who spoke to God with great love and great longing. They yearned, they yearned to see the face of God. And their practice of conversing lovingly with God enabled them to receive clear guidance from the Holy Spirit, which led them ultimately to Jesus. My friends, we too, we too must pray, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Let me follow the Holy Spirit into your presence. Brothers and sisters, we must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Christ was born for us. His destiny was the cross. His purpose was love. And his reason, his reason was you. Jesus Christ is God's gift to us. In the Old Testament, the patriarchs and the prophets, they longed for and prayed for the coming of the Messiah. And their beautiful prayer, the prayer they prayed, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. To guide our feet into the way of peace. That same Jesus, our Savior, is here with us today. And he says to us, I love you. I will always love you. For you, you are precious in my eyes. And here at this altar, we discover the Lord Jesus. We discover that the Lord Jesus is absolute tenderness, tender love. And he comes to us once more to give us that love. And we kneel here in adoration and thanksgiving, knowing that we are simply God's little child. Let's offer our hearts today, my friends, to Jesus and ask him to fill our hearts with his love. Then we can truly bring his love, his mercy, his compassion, and yes, his peace, his peace to all of our brothers and sisters. We know, we know by faith that joy and hope are the promised gifts that our loving God gives us. We're all children of God. We've said our yes to the Lord, our I believe, and we truly do believe that we are to love our God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength. And we're to love, love our neighbor as Jesus loves us. How, how do I love my neighbor? I must treat each person as a brother or a sister with dignity, no matter race or color or creed. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. These are demanding words from the Lord. How, how do I eradicate just prejudice and bigotry from my life? with humility, with meekness, and with love. Heal wounds, warm hearts. How do I work for peace in the world? It must begin at home, my friends. 
Never, never should there be room for anger or hatred. Always, always reach out in love. Do I speak up for life? How do I protect the sacredness of human life from inception until natural death? In this pandemic, we're painfully aware of sickness and suffering. There's fear and loneliness. And already more than a half a million people have died. We must pray. We must pray for healing, for mercy, and for consolation. And we must never, never forget those millions of unborn babies who are not allowed to see the light of day because of the horrific act of abortion. It's the greatest plague of our times, and it's the darkest cloud that hangs over our nation. And it's a terrible, terrible sin. Time is short. Fill it with God's love. We must stand up for life. We look again to begin again. We're starting Lent. And we'll long remember and not soon forget 2020. With all of its challenging experiences, all that we've gone through this past year. But we thank Almighty God who has brought us to a new day. And as we begin again, we pray for a new springtime for our church, for our country, and for our families. Remember that manger scene at Christmas? We remind ourselves of the Magi who in those Christmas days they brought three gifts to the Christ child and they paid him homage. Dare we now ask our blessed Lord Jesus to bring us three gifts, three gifts that are sorely needed today as we start afresh to journey towards our God, the gifts of peace and courage and wisdom. They would so bless our church, our country, and our families, especially in these turbulent times. As we go to the altar today and receive our Lord Jesus into our hearts, let this be our prayer. Bring us, Lord, bring us peace and serenity and courage and wisdom and help us, help us to grow in your love. Take that risk. Dare to give your all and never, never lose heart. Abandon your minds and your hearts to Jesus, to God. And like our blessed Mother Mary, just say yes. I'm totally yours. Psalm 25 in the breviary that we pray. There's a beautiful prayer. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I trust you. Let me not be disappointed. In you I hope all the day long. Because of your goodness, Lord, remember your mercy. Turn to me and have mercy and set me free from my distress. See my affliction and my toil and take away all my sins. Do not disappoint me. You, you are my refuge. My hope is in you, O Lord. At times like this, my brothers and sisters, we must keep our eyes fixed, fixed on Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is our all. He's our Savior. Because of Jesus, we have peace which surpasses understanding. Because of Jesus, we have joy that we cannot lose. And because of Jesus, we have nothing to fear and everything, everything to hope for. Today, tomorrow, and always. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. St. Teresa of Calcutta, a mother for our own times. She would always say, 
be only all for Jesus. Be only all for Jesus. She was. She was. And how she touched the world with God's tender love. My friends, be only all for Jesus. Speak to Jesus with love. And peace be with you. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. We bring our prayers, our needs, our love to the Lord at this altar, and we ask him to make them his own. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and laymen, that they would be guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they would develop the fruits of the Spirit and to act with love, kindness, peace, and to work together for the good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our academy and its needs, that the Holy Spirit will overshadow us and fill us with wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our families, that we'd open ourselves to the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are sick, suffering, or homeless, and for the poor and unemployed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of every human person, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions that we now recall in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bring these prayers now and all of our prayers to Jesus through Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and cleanse our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now, and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We put Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to gather with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternity.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who have been pleased to nourish us with heavenly food, pour, we pray, the delights of your Spirit into the recesses of our heart, that what we have devoutly received in time we may possess as a gift for eternity through Christ our Lord. And I want to thank Father Park and his parish family for allowing us to celebrate this Mass in this beautiful church and what a way to begin this uh, day of recollection and retreat. And I want to also thank our Archbishop and tell him that we're, as a group, praying to the Holy Spirit for the local church and asking God's blessing on us in this time of synod and also in this time of the pandemic that we could grow in holiness. And then finally, the Holy Spirit Academy for organizing uh, this day of prayer. Uh, what a special grace that is for all of us. And we thank them for all they did to help make this a beautiful day. And for all those who are participating in this day of recollection, we'll pray for each other that God would help us grow in his love. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.